I'm Candy Glendenning from CandyFabrics.com and what I'm going to do in this video is show you a way that I do free motion machine quilting um, of big quilts and I kind of quilt as I go and I don't have sashing strips in between the blocks. So um, there's a lot of different ways to quilt as you go. I haven't invented this method. I'm sure other people do it this way as well. but. Um, I know that a lot of people, when they do quilt as they go, they um, quilt each individual piece of the quilt um, as you know by itself, and then they put together all the pieces at the end with sashing. Um, and so that sashing step is a little fussy, and it also adds a design element that you may not always want to use. Um, so I this is the way I do it and um, I snapped some pictures when I did a similar quilt to what's on the wall behind me and um, people were really interested in how I did this so I decided to um, I'm making another another one of these quilts and I thought I would kind of take you through the process with a video because um, videos are very helpful teaching people what to do okay and so um, what I've got here um, is a pretty it's a twin size quilt um, and it's, um, I have sewed together the columns of these blocks already. So it's four columns long and each, and each column there's a total of five blocks. Um, and you know, as you see the design, the way I've designed it, there's no sashing in between. Now, if you actually wanted to have blocks that had sashing, you could have the sashing between the blocks and you could actually have, you know, have those sashing strips already sewn on. Okay. But the goal is we're going to be quilting, um, one column at a time. And, um, we're only going to have the bulk of one column's worth. So this is what, 16 inches or so underneath, um, our quilt, our, our sorry, our sewing machine uh, at a time. So this is really awesome for those of us that don't have a great big long arm um, or you know some other sort of sit down long arm sort of thing. So we can quilt with minimal bulk underneath the quilt. Okay and so um, what I wanted to start with is just to show you that I have individual columns um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, I'm going to sandwich this first column with batting and backing um, with a little bit of extra all the way around and I'm going to quilt it. Um, and when I quilt it on this edge, which is the outside edge, I'm going to make sure to quilt all the way to the edge the way I want. Um, but this edge here where we're going to add the next column to, I am not going to quilt all the way to the edge. I'm going to, um, because I'm using an all over design, I'm going to quilt it. So sometimes I go close to the edge and sometimes I kind of leave some space so that in the next round, when I add the second column, um, I, um, when I start quilting, I will go back and forth across this line here, um, with my overall design and I'll end up with what I hope <laughs> is, um, a quilt that doesn't, um, automat you know doesn't look like it's been sewn together in columns now um, I'm going to do free motion you could be quilting you know just straight lines or little wavy lines um, with a um, with a foot with a walking foot as well um, and you know if that's the case if you wanted to do just straight lines up and down there you could just you know quilt to almost the edge um, but anyways the, the point of all of this is we're going to quilt with just one columns width of quilts underneath the sewing machine all the time. So let me get that first column all quilted up and then I will come back and show you what I think is the, the part that is confusing to some people, how I add the second um, column complete with the fabric and the batting and the backing um, to the first. Okay, so uh, I hope this is gonna be helpful. All right, my friends, um, first of all, don't freak out. I've got an all the sew um, iron, so um, it's supposed to be like that. Um, I've also turned it off for this video. Um, what, but so it's here to, to tell you about the batting that I prefer. Um, I use fusible batting. It, this particular brand is Fusaboo, so it's a bamboo um, cotton blend. 
and I, I get it at, um, you know, big box sewing stores. Um, and so um, I love fusible batting. Um, I, well, because I hated pin, pin basting. And um, when they started using um, those spray glues, um, I used those, but gosh, they're, um, they're hard to deal with inside on because they, because of the residue on the floor. So um, when I discovered that, um, I believe Hobbs um, was the first brand that I used. And now I use the Fusibu really because it's easier for me to get. Um, anyway, um, I love fusible batting. You don't need it, um, but there's a, a step later on um, where uh, it's, it really helps me out. Um, so anyway, um, I'm using fusible batting. So this um, um, little sandwich has already been um, ironed together. And I'll probably press it one more time because I see that there's some bubbles here that I, um, I need to get down. Um, but anyway, now that I've talked about the fusible batting, I wanted to show you. So um, this is the first column, the leftmost column of the quilt. Um, and so I'm going to be adding to this edge. Um, and so what I wanted to show you is that I have um, a border of backing and batting that's bigger on this side than this side um, because this is the outside edge of my quilt. So I'm going to be quilting all the way to the edge, you know, up at the top and up at the bottom. I'm going to be quilting all the way out there. So um, you need to have a, a, a good amount of batting and backing at the very edge so you your hands have something to hold um, while you're quilting. Um, I've got a lot of experience mach machine quilting so this is enough for me. Um, um, more beginning students I suggest even having more, having a strip about um, maybe even four inches big because you want to lay your your hands flat and quilt all the way to the edge. Now on this side I don't um, have as much of an overhang because, as I said before, um, what I do in this method with this particular quilt style, because I want to have an all-over pattern, um, I am not going to be quilting ex all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave an uneven margin not quilted on this pass so that when I add a strip here, when I add a strip here, um, um, I will be quilting, you know, something that's that's not even um, attached yet. Um, and then I'll come back and forth and I'll fill in the uneven edge here and I'll quilt a lot over this particular seam. So um, just to to eliminate the linearness of the, the structure of how we're actually doing that. Now and again, uh, a lot of quilts, um, you, your quilting pattern may really fit having some linearness and you know you really may want to have something that goes right to the edge um and so in that case if you're doing that i would just suggest um having a border a bigger border on this side of the quilt as well so you can quilt all the way to the edge but for this particular project i want to minimize um that i'm quilting in columns and so i'm going to give myself some space here okay so I'm just going to go ahead and quilt this first column and then I will come back um, and show you um, the most important step which is how to get this all put together when you now we're, when, when you add the next set of um, backing batting and quilt top okay I have now quilted this, um, the first column of my quilt, um, and I wanted to show you a couple of things. Again, don't freak out. My iron is a automatic lifter here, okay? Um, so this is the outside edge um, with the extra batting and backing so I could quilt right to the edge all along the way. And then um, on this side, this is the side that is going to get trimmed, and I'm going to add the next column of blocks to, and so I've left you know, unquilted parts here. So it goes in here, um, comes out a little bit here. So when I come back and do the next row, I'm going to be quilting across this border here. Um, so, you know, I just talked to you about the, uh, the fusible batting. Um, the fusible is very, <laughs> it's not, it um, releases quite easily. Um, and so I actually stopped at one point during quilting and ironed it. 
and I'm, I'm ironing it again because um, the edges are quite puffy right now um, and I want them as flat as they possibly can be. So um, I just wanted to point that out to you that, you know, fusible batting is, it's very repositionable and it also means when you're quilting it, um, you, uh, it lo loses its stickiness after a while. So you may want to put a few pins along the edge anyway, so that you don't have your back, right? See how your backing is very loose here? Um, so you don't have your backing flip over and you quilt it in, which I'm sure if you've quit machine quilted at all I'm sure this has happened to you at least once okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, iron this whole strip and then I am going to trim this even right so I'm going to whack off the batting and the backing so this is completely even and um, this edge is this is the outside edge it's going to get trimmed later on but I'm going to leave it um, I'm going to leave it for now so that I don't at some point in a dazed, a dazed and confused state somehow attach the wrong column to the wrong side. So I leave this as a reminder that that's an outside edge. So I'm going to trim this and then I'm going to pin the, um, both the backing and the, the next column of uh, blocks to this and I will come back and explain to you exactly how that works.